In the last video, I created a script that picked or selected an object that was clicked on. If you missed the previous video, check the link in the upper right. This video will build on and make use of the code created in the last video to allow the movement of an object around on a surface by changing the position of the transform component. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I need to do is create a new flow macro and I'll call it transform move on surface. The name may be a tad long, but at least it's descriptive. I'm going to add another flow machine to the pickable manager and drop in the newly created flow macro. This flow macro is going to raycast from the camera through the mouse cursor to get a location of where to move the object. It'll then update the position of the transform component. So I'll double click to enable full screen editing of the flow macro. And the first thing I want to add is an update event as this code needs to run every frame. I next want to check if the picked object variable is null. If no object is selected, then I don't want to run any more code. Dragging out the flow from the update, I'll add in a null check unit, and then I'll drag in the picked object variable and connect its output to the null check. If the variable is not null, then I want to check if the left mouse button is being pressed. This is not strictly necessary, but adds one more layer of error checking. I'll then drag the flow and the Boolean outputs into a branch. If the branch evaluates is true, then I want to do a raycast. I want the same variation of raycast from the last video. And that's one that takes in a ray, a distance, and a layer while outputting a Boolean and hit info. I'll build up the ray just like in the last video, using camera screen point array with the camera main and mouse position units as inputs. I'll also set the max distance to 100 and add a layer mask literal unit like so. I'll drag the flow and the Boolean output of the raycast unit into a branch as I don't want the code to go any further unless the raycast hit a game object. Next, I'm going to use a vector3 lerp function to help smooth the motion of the object. A lerp function smoothly interpolates a value from a starting value to a final value. It does this in small steps, and the t parameter controls the size of those steps. A zero value for t will move the value 0% of the way to the final value. 0.5 would move the value halfway between the starting value and the final value, and a 1 would move the value all the way to the final value. When this function is called over several frames, the result is the smoothing of the values. It is also important to know that the output of the lerp will never actually reach the final value. It's just going to get really close. I'll connect the flow and the vector3 output of the lerp function to a transform position set unit. Next, I'll drag out the picked object variable and connect it to the transform position set unit since the picked object is the object I want to move. I'll also add a transform position get unit to set the starting value or a value of the lerp unit. Using the output of the raycast, I need to get the location of where the raycast hit. So I'll drag out the hit info node and then search for raycast point and choose the get option. While this gives me a location, I don't want the object to move exactly to this point. Instead, I want to vertically offset the object so that it appears to be moving over the top of the plane. To do this, I'll include a vector3 add unit and send the raycast hit info point into the a value. In the B value of the add, I'll set the Y value of the vector 3 to be 1, which for my case is enough to raise my cubes above the ground. You'll need to adjust this value depending on the objects you're moving. This offset could also be user controlled, say with the mouse scroll wheel, to give the player more control in another dimension. The output of the add unit then needs to be connected to the lerp unit. Lastly, I need to construct the T value of the lerp. I want to have the objects move in such a way that it will be independent of the frame rate so the computers of different speeds will see similar motion. To do this, I'm going to use a time delta time unit, which outputs the time in seconds of the previous frame. This means if the last frame took a long time, the time step in the lerp will be bigger and the object will move further per frame. Or if the last frame took only a short time, the time step in the lerp will be small and the object will not move very far per frame. The result is a constant speed of the object in real time. Since frame times are generally very short, I'll also need to multiply the time delta time by a value to tune the speed of the object. In this case, I'm going to multiply by 10. You'll need to adjust the value of the multiplier to get the desired result for your project. I'll then connect the output of the add unit to the lerp unit. 
Oh, and I almost forgot. I need to set the layer in the layer mask to default, since the surface I'm moving the object on is the plane, which is on the default layer. I'm going to press play, and let's see how it works. I can now click and drag objects around the plane. Notice that if my mouse leaves the plane, the object does not follow, as the raycast does not return a hit. You may also notice that the objects can pass through each other, and this is because I'm not using the physics engine to move the objects. In the next video, I'll modify the script from this video to use the physics engine to move the objects around. This will allow the objects to collide and even push each other around. So if you found this video useful or helpful, please think about hitting the subscribe and like buttons. If you want to go even further in supporting the channel, check out a link to my Discord server and Patreon page in the video descriptions below. So until next time, happy game designing.